everybody. Welcome to 2019. It is me, Stella Wild. I am here with your January tarot scopes. Very excited uh, to get into this month's energies. There is a lot of energy to work with. Uh, th that's almost too much to go into for just one tarot reading. So please, I have put together a monthly horoscope column, so please do check that out. I will leave the link uh, in the description. It's on my website. It's a written horoscope for each sun sign, including some general energy information you'll want to know. So if you're into astrology, you know, you might want to check that out. Also, I am offering a year ahead tarot reading. It's a 20 minute reading that gets into your personal energies for the year ahead and you can book that on my website. I am still doing a, you know, regular tarot readings for the month of January as well. So if you have a personal concern, please do book a reading with me. And finally, I have put on sale the Jupiter in Sagittarius luck and opportunity forecasts. These are a minimum half hour long readings uh, plus some you can get you get a transit calendar with that and some other stuff. So you might want to check that out. It's it's great, very easy to access, and you have access to it uh, for the entire year. So it's not just like you watch it and then you don't ever get to see it again. You just have to create, once you purchase it, you create a little account on, the, um, on my website, and then you can log in and watch it as many times as you want. And that's true for the video products that I sell on the website. So, that is something that you might be interested in. So the way I'm going to do the readings this month is I'm going to be doing a Celtic cross as usual. For some of you who have been watching for a while, thank you. <laughs> you know that I kind of tune in and I wait till I hear what my spirit guides kind of want me to do. And they're telling me I need to use this deck, my, my very powerful Rider Waite deck, and do a Celtic cross for you all. And also, they are telling me to pull an angel answer card for everybody uh, in answer to a question that you may have and or kind of a theme for your year ahead. So I am going to start with the sign that had the most views in the month of December and then the second most views, third most views, etc. And that's the order I will do the readings and release them onto YouTube. Uh, the other thing is I would really appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, subscribe because these messages have really been resonating with so many people uh, as I've seen every month through comments and also through private messages. And the more we can get the word out and help more people with the information, um, you know, the better, the better it is. So let's spread the love, <laughs> okay? All right, awesome. Thank you for your help with that. And let's get into the readings. Hey, Aries, here I am with your January 2019 tarot scope. I have been shuffling, <laughs> tuning into your energy. So how was your December? We had a great forecast for you for December. And as an Aries myself, I have to say that my forecast was rather accurate just saying <laughs> for December I had a good month I hope that you did too okay so Aries what is happening in January how are you feeling Mars is going into our sign are we ready I have been like going to the gym like like a fanatic and Mars isn't even quite into Aries yet, but I'm already feeling pumped up and feeling the energy of let's make it happen. All right. It's good to have some fire energy happening. I mean, I have a lot of water in my chart, so I'm like okay when there's water going on, which there's been a lot of water happening lately. But it really is refreshing for a fire sign to have some fire sign energy happening. We got that Jupiter and Sag. Now we have Mars. All right, that didn't quite break yet. Sorry, I got to do it again. Um, now we have our Mars happening in our sign. We have a full moon in Leo, full moon solar eclipse in Leo. So there's some, there's some fiery energy afoot. 
but hey, we Aries like that. All right, let's see. I'm gonna lay out the Celtic cross and look what comes out as our first card, our energy. Uh-oh, crossed by the Nine of Swords. <laughs> I hope we don't have anything to be crying about. <laughs> okay, uh-oh. Uh-oh, so I'm gonna lay the cards out. Uh-oh. Mm. Uh-oh. Oh. I'm going to lay these cards out. Interesting. Now, I shuffled very thoroughly, and you got a couple of cards same as Sagittarius. If you have any Sag in your chart, if you have Sag Moon or Sag Rising Aries, go watch the Sag video because there are similar cards coming out. So I think that you'll, you know, have a fuller picture by watching uh, your sign and... Um, Sages. I think it's a love reading overall. It's a love. This is a love reading, but this is, I think, a situation that. Uh, and I'm gonna probably pull another card for you guys as well. I've been trying to keep these readings to about twenty-ish minutes. I've been successful so far because I'm trying to get them uploaded quicker to YouTube. But I may have to pull another one and, and dive deeper into this outcome card. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of ten cards here that are upside down. So the energy is is unstable. Let me take another sip of tea. I just made a fresh cup, so. I feel like you're going to be doing your best to let go of a toxic relationship, Aries. Now, again, this is not applicable to all Aries. Like, I don't feel this reading actually even fits me, but <laughs> and I'm an Aries. But this these cards are coming through because it is a message for, for, even if it's just for one Aries out there, it doesn't matter. Like that, this spirit is bringing these cards to give that message. So, and as you know, as I said, as I say in my other videos, if you you know cross watch, um, I always want the best for whoever I'm reading for, whether I'm reading for people in YouTube land or I'm reading for a client sitting here with me or a client over video, doesn't matter. Like I want the best. So, you know, but I have to read the cards that I am seeing. And, you know, as I say, I'm not gonna make up a fairy story. I, you know, Aries, right? We, we tell it like it is. And, you know, but energy is always fluid. It's always changing. And when we have this, this knowledge, then we can make different choices. So, um, and there's nothing like bad here. I mean, this is just stuff that some Aries are working through right now. And I feel it's to do with a toxic love relationship, honestly. Um, and I feel even with this outcome card, it's, it's you are trying to let this go but it is proving very difficult to do so. Now, I don't have third party here, so I don't feel it's a third party situation. It could be, but that's not the issue. The issue is that this relationship doesn't make you feel good. This relationship that you're in, Aries, does not make you feel proud of yourself. Okay? Um, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't make you feel good. Oh, I've got to get a new chair. I got to get a new computer. I got to get a new chair. My God. Oh, all right. Back to the reading. This relationship is not making you feel good. And I'll go, well, I'm going to work through all these cards. And you've tried to end it before. I mean, these, I have cards here from the recent past, the near future, and the outcome that are all you trying to end this and not being successful at doing so. So, I don't know. I'm gonna pull another one because I don't, I don't like ending on the world upside down. I don't wanna end on this card for you with this situation. So let's, we'll see, we'll see what transpires. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go right, I'm gonna walk you through this. Base of our reading, we have the Ace of Cups upside down. So the, the love relationship is dying a slow death. And that is why you're here, Aries, 
whether male or female doesn't matter the aries king of wands energy and or if you're you know this could be another fire sign you're involved with right it doesn't i mean either way both of you know are having sleepless nights and restlessness and upset over this relationship that's dying i mean the relationship is 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 going through a very slow death is what i am seeing here and it is a classic i feel the classic situation of we tried to separate and we couldn't this is in the recent past again judgment in the near future upside down we're trying to let it go and we can't in the environment devil upside down where this is an addictive love relationship this is codependent this is toxic it's there in the environment in the heart ace of wands upside down you know it's over i mean but but and there's crying and upset but why are you still together you're still you're still entangled world upside down it's not over yet this it's not released yet why not okay like why not the card at the top of your reading in the Celtic cross Aries is the four of pentacles. And this is where I was saying that this relationship doesn't make you feel good. You're trying to hold on to your self-esteem because remember pentacles doesn't always have to be about money. It's about worth. It's about what you value. It's, it's you know, and so you're trying to hold on to dear life for your dignity, your pride, your self-esteem, you know, what makes Aries, Aries. And this relationship, I'm just looking here. I'm just, the only cards that are upright are you and your self-esteem. That's it. Everything else here is upside down. So this is a very st unstable, chaotic situation. Um, so you're trying to hold on. You're trying to hold on to your sense of self-worth and what makes you you for dear life. And um, yeah, so this, this is, you're hoping, I think the other piece that makes this toxic is that you're really hoping that this person is gonna wake up and see your value. That they're going to somehow have a revelation about, about you. I have to say this, even though this energy can represent you, Aries, and I'm an Aries, so I, I mean, I can say this about us, although I don't think I'm this way, but by the, we all have the potential to be selfish, right? This energy can be selfish. Now, when this is upside down, this is real selfish bastard energy, okay? Narcissistic, selfish bastard. But we don't have that. We have it upright. So this is just garden variety selfishness, <laughs> okay? This is somebody who um, maybe uh, is a new soul that's incarnated. You know, they haven't maybe lived that many lifetimes, so they're still learning. Okay, they're still learning how to share their toys. Um, so, you know, this could be this could be you. This could be the other person. I feel like this is the other person, though, uh, that this other person is so self-involved. I don't feel narcissist, though. I'm not feeling that. I mean, it could be. I just feel like they, they're kind of clueless. Like they're just like see everything from their perspective, but not in a narcissistic manipulative way, just in kind of a dumb, selfish way. I hope that makes sense because I think there is a distinction there, okay? And I think where the toxicity is coming in, Aries, is that you keep trying to get this person to see your value and your worth, but they're, they're not. They're just caught up in themselves. They're caught up in their own needs and you and your needs get constantly put on the back burner. Okay. Now, like I said, it could be because they're a narcissist. I'm not entirely feeling that though. That's just psychic. I'm not feeling that. Um, cause there would be some other indications here and I'm just, I'm not just not feeling it. Uh, of course it's possible. Absolutely. But I think you're both having, I don't like when my hair is like that. I think you're both having some, um, 
very difficult times. The other thing about this Nine of Swords card is that this can be uh, intentional cruelty. And I got to give props whenever I say that Philip Young, who uh, is up in Raleigh and does tarot readings, he's, he's great. Love him. Love his energy. Um, I went to one of his lectures and he talked about this card being a card of intentional cruelty. And I thought, wow, that's a very interesting perspective for this card. And I think that is possible. I think the relationship has gotten so dysfunctional, between, dysfunctional, this is in the home environment, dysfunctional with this person that you are now both being really cruel to each other. Or maybe just this King of Wands is being extremely cruel to you but intentionally. And it's because this relationship is breaking down and nobody can seem to just put the final kibosh on it. You have tried to move on. This is a card, like normally when this is upright, this is about moving on, moving forward, things are changing. Upside down, nothing's moving on. You've tried, it hasn't happened. That's in the recent past. Let me pause the video so my computer doesn't have a meltdown. So yeah, so you've tried, tried to move on, haven't been able to same thing judgment upside down this is um you know yes it can be a lack of good judgment a lack of discernment like and lack of um not taking responsibility perhaps when this is upright this is about you know new life resurrection a message coming in like this is good it's upside down in the near future so again another card that's indicating that this is not dying i mean it's dying but who's like gonna finally bury the thing right so then in the heart is the ace of wands upside down so the other thing i have to say with this card there's probably not much intimacy going on either uh, it could be that one of the problems with the relationship is that the, the King of Wands is having a problem with his equipment, okay, in some manner. <laughs> you got me? Okay, okay. All right, that's possible. Um, that's possible. Okay, but anyway, in the heart, Aries, you know that this relationship is over. It's it's done, and it's to the point where, I don't know if you've ever been in a relationship like, you know how some relationships, like, even though they're kind of, like, winding down and petering out and dying, you're still having sex with the person, right? There are some like that. Then there's others where, where it's winding down and like, you don't even want them to touch you, right? So this is like, you don't even want them to touch you kind of relationship. You know, this is like, like in the bed, like, like you're over here, like, don't even touch me. But for some reason, it's been very challenging to put the kibosh on this relationship because there has been... There has been, there was probably an element of strong um, intimacy and lust at one point, but now it's upside down. And that means, you know, with these two cards, you know, heart and then environment, this is like the uh, lust has turned into nothing. Like there's nothing left. There's no spark. There's no chemistry. Um, and I really think it's because this individual was extremely, like I said, very, very selfish and focused on their own needs. Um, so, but at one point, there was a very strong alchemical reaction between the two of you. But this is, this is more of an addictive kind. So that's, this is a very, this is card is a lot about codependency. And then, you know, it just turns toxic. And that's why we have that in the home. Um, the hope and the fear is the eight of pentacles upside down. This is interesting in the hope and the fear. I think that you will be glad, Aries, 
to not have this as a project that you have to work on. I think this relationship has been a lot of work for you also. Like I think probably initially the relationship was fine in the bed. Okay, it was like fun. when I mean fine, I say that in quotes. I mean, there was a lot of lust driving the whole thing. But then as the relationship progressed, it just turned into a lot of hard work on an emotional level. Because as I said, I feel like this, this King of Wands individual, especially with this Nine of Swords over, the selfishness is cruel. The selfishness is thoughtless. The selfishness is, I don't feel like it's narcissistically malignant though. I know I keep saying this, but I, I don't feel like it's that, like that. I just feel it's, it's um, cruel because it's clueless. Like, because this person is just like this about themselves. So I'm trying to think of a good, good example, but I think, I think, you know, you know what I mean? Um, so, and so I feel like the relationship has become almost like a job, right? Upright, this is a job. This is a job you really would like to let go of. Like, I, this has been too much work. This is in your hope and your fear. Like, I never want to go through this again. This relationship that is just too much work and they're not paying me a salary to do it. <laughs> it's too much work. I gotta draw another card because look, we have the world. We're ending with the world upside down. No, this cannot be. Like this relationship needs to be over because here you are, Aries. You're like clinging on to the last shred of your self-respect here. All right? So let me draw. I'm gonna shuffle and draw another card. This This is so over. It's so over. All right, what do we need to know about this this relationship ending? What is going on with this world card? I really want to know. I want an answer. My Aries, my fellow Aries, they cannot be left hanging with this situation. Come on. Um, now, as I said, this is not maybe applicable to all Aries. I will say, though, that if this doesn't fit you, Aries, in terms of a relationship, um, then this reading is about some sort of desire that you wanted very badly to have happen, some sort of desire, some sort of heart desire. So this could be for a certain outcome, like... You wanted your business to grow. You wanted a dream to happen. You wanted a trip to manifest. You wanted to start school. I, mean, I don't know. Like there could be any, you know, passion project thing. And it's the same kind of concept that the universe, Aries, has been giving you signs all along that, that this particular thing that you feel is so important that you must have it it's actually not right for you at all and you know as i've said in other videos with other signs you may or may not have seen but rejection is protection when you get rejected from the universe with a certain plan you want to manifest and it doesn't happen there's a reason take it as the timing is not right. The universe is protecting you from something. You don't have to know what it is. Just accept that, okay, it's protecting you. So, you know, walking away from something, accepting it that this is not right for you, you know, that may be applicable. If this love situation is not accurate for you, Aries, so it may be, you know, something else. And in your heart, you sense that, this project that you want is really not, there's something not right with it. And maybe you've been pursuing it because it fits in some, um, you know, plays to your ego. Like it would be cool to post about it on, on Instagram and Facebook and like to let people know you're doing it. So it's like an ego boost, but it's not 
but you realize that you know if I really got that or I did that it really it's not really exactly what I want anyway okay so like it's you're like doing it and wanting it for the wrong reasons so that's another possibility but let's ask about my Aries with this relationship because that's my initial feeling that this is about a relationship that just cannot seem to end all right and the thing is too with air with mars going through your sign aries you know when it hits any sensitive points like your sun it might hit mercury or venus i don't have mercury or venus in aries i just have sun um but when it hits it can really um energize that that planet in aries so if when um, Mars transits conjunct your Mercury, for example, you may find yourself shooting your mouth off and getting into an argument about this situation as an example. So with Mars in Aries for the month of January, you know, you have to be attuned to that. You're much more likely to be very um, irritable or easily triggered if possible especially with this type of situation going on. All right, let's see. What do we need to know about this? Mm, 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 mm. All righty, this is what we got. Aries, you're gonna be moving on. This is the single woman, but you're gonna be fine. You're going to feel so much better. Like this is also a woman, woman with a lot of self-esteem because look at all the pentacles around her. Like she can take care of herself and she has the money to live on her own and do what she needs to do. Like she's fine. There is some revelation that's going to come very, um, okay, wait, back it up. Hold on. The truth that's going to come out probably at your full moon is a truth that already came out. It already came out, but for whatever reason, because of whatever uh, dysfunction was going on that made you unable to let this relationship go, you kind of brushed this under the rug, this, this revelation that comes out, like you already know, but it's going to come out again, maybe in just a slightly different form, and that's going to be the thing that finally wraps up this situation because it is going to wrap up we take this go to here go to here go to here so i would say like by the middle of february this situation well probably by the end of february but it might be sooner than that i feel by the full moon in january january 22nd 21st 22nd you will get another piece of information will be revealed. Seven of Swords upside down is truth coming out, right? This person is not going to be getting away with any more crap. But like I said, with this Knight of Swords upside down, I feel like there's already been a revelation of a very similar kind. It's like a, it's like Groundhog Day, right? It's like on repeat, like you're getting it again. <laughs> okay, again, like, like act two of something you already knew, but it's going to come out again. I, you guys know what I'm talking about. I mean, like like I said, I don't feel like there's third party here. I don't feel like they cheated. But let's say they cheated. Because I don't have any third party cards going on. Unless we count the Seven of Swords upside down. But that's not enough just for third party. That's just deception. So they could have lied about their finances. They could have lied about somebody else. They were still texting, you know. Um, they could have lied about... I don't know, whatever. Well, another truth comes out about how they lied again about the same thing. Okay, so that's what I mean. So, but it will wrap up. Like like I said, it's like deja vu. Like, here it is again. You know, we already went through this. And then you'll make the decision to step out on your own. I think you will be the one leaving it. I think the other person still gets, because he is here, if this represents your fire sign partner, this partner is still, you know, because they're so tunnel vision, they're still getting a lot of benefit from this relationship. So it's like their needs are being met and um, 
you know, so they're not going to, and they're still able to do whatever they want to do because they think that, you know, you don't really know what's going on, but more information is going to come out at that full moon. So they think that, you know, well, having somebody is better than nobody. And maybe the both of you kind of have that idea going on too. Um, but the thing is, it's, I think also whatever comes out is going to be rather insulting to you, Aries. It's going to be insulting to your uh, pride. Aries have a lot of pride. People don't realize that. And I think, you know, people think always oh, Leo with the pride. But no, Aries has it very strongly. And um, like I said, you, you are doing the best you can to hold on to your last like shred of self-respect and I think what what this comes out what comes out is more the disrespect that this person tried this I just sometimes have to swear tried this shit on you again Aries okay this like I said it's a deja vu like they they tried this again thinking what you're stupid no come on well yeah they thought that and that's what'll get an Aries to go Because Aries are not dumb. You you know, you try to... They're innocent. They can be innocent sometimes, right? Aries can be like a little gullible. But that's different. And an Aries does not like it. You try to play them and, I mean, done. And it's because it's insulting to their pride. Okay. Let's see. All right, Aries. This was a heavy reading. And we had such a great reading last month. Like, it was like, woohoo. But like I said, I feel for some Aries, this is, this is the message that some Aries out there need right now. So I gotta, you know, I gotta read it. Um, you know, you get the message that is meant for you. So if this is not meant for you, that's okay. All right, let's see. Maybe this angel card will be meant for you. Let's pull a card and answer to your question, Aries, or we'll get more information about this spread that we just did. Let's see. Whoa. Oh, no, I don't like that one. Okay, hold on. <laughs> These cards have been full of energies tonight. All right, let's see. I'm just kind of waiting. They feel like weird. All right, hold on. quite feeling it yet. I don't want to arbitrarily pull one. They usually, okay, that one's kind of popping out at me. Okay. Ask your angels. Ask your angels. So if there's some, um, you know, further inner guidance that you need about this situation, definitely. Pray, journal, reflect whatever works for you but ask your angels all right aries i wish you all the best for january 2019 this situation is not easy but um you know that it is time this relationship is way past its sell-by date you know that so i wish you all the best in uh navigating that situation and um you know if you need if this is really applying to you but you need a personal reading you know situations like this if you need um, a personal reading please uh, check out my website and book one with me I'd be happy to work with you and help you through this so take care Aries and I will see you soon Stella